Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we become more familiar with styles in React Native and use inline style and style sheet for styling. In the preview session, we got acquainted with the state and its usage, and now we can use the values dynamically on the page. Now let's take a closer look at the styling so we can change the look of the page the way we want. Well, we open the project in VS Code and remove the extra parts to explain the styling on some components. As we said before, the style in JS6 is very similar to CSS in HTML. In the preview sessions, we use the style sheet to style the components. We can also do this inline. For example, we can use this block of style sheets directly in the component. I will make a change in this block to see its effect. As you can see, we used inline style in view, and the text style is still read from the style sheet. By moving styles away from the JS6 body, you're making the code easier to understand. Also, naming the styles is a good way to add meaning to the low-level components. Therefore, I recommend that you use the style sheet for styling. The format of each style object must be such that it is between two brackets, and the comma must be placed at the end of each props. Of course, it's not necessary for the last item, but if the previous items don't have commas, it will give an error. Also here, each props is set with colon, while in the components, the value is set with equals sign. Each component accepts certain values in the style. We can find the values for each component via reactnative.dev. We go to the component section. From here, I activate dark mode to make it look better. In the basic component section, select view. Here we find the style props and click on view styles to see the values that this props specifically accepts. For example, in view component, we can use the border in a style. When we write a part of a props, it offers us the available props. If this section does not open or is closed for any reason, we can open it by click Ctrl and Space. In order for the border to be displayed, we must set the border width. As you can see, the border was displayed around the view, but its color is not defined and is black by default. Using the border color, we change its color to make it look better. Using the border radius, we can round the corners of the border. I set the margin for the view component to make it look better. I also change the color of the view to separate it from the background. We can also set the border separately for each side. In preview sessions, we used Flex to cover the full screen view. We will explain Flex more in the next session. Instead of Flex, we can use Width and Height. Like CSS, we can use them in two modes, Pixel and Percentage. If we use it in Pixels, the size of the view will be fixed. And if we use it as a percentage, its size will be set based on the percentage of screen width and height. Here, because we set the width to 100% and the view has a margin, we don't see part of the view. If I delete the margin, you will see that the view width is set to the width of the page. Now let's look at the style on the text component. I increase the text size a little to make it look better. We go to the text component page to see the props it accepts in a style. You can find the style more easily from this side. 
Here we select the text style props. You will see the props that you can set in the text component style. For example, we use the text transform. If we set the value to uppercase, the letters of the text will be capitalized. You can find other values that it accepts here or by clicking the control and space to see their IntelliSense window. Well, now we go to the button component to style it. For example, I increase its width and height a little. Like the previous components, I set the style in the button component. But as you can see, nothing happens. We go to the button component document to find the cause. As you can see, no style prop is defined for this component. In order to have a custom style button, we can put it in a separate view and give it a style. Or we can use button replacement components such as touchables that we will become more familiar with in the future. Now I create a view to apply our style on the button. I put the button in it and I put the button style in the view. As you can see, the style affected the button. Of course, this method does not do much personalization. And to have personalized buttons, it is better to use the touchables. Well, I make it a little bigger. Now we go to the style sheet document. A style sheet have several methods. We use the create method to create our style objects. A style sheet have two other widely used methods called composite and flatten that are used to combine a style sheet objects and prevent duplication of commonly used objects. For example, the composite method combines two styles such that style 2 will override any styles in style 1. Take a look at the example here. There are two style sheets called page and lists. And below them we have a style sheet that is made from a combination of two objects. I make the page a little smaller to see the web output of this code. For example, the style given to this text is created by combining two objects from style sheets. If I make a change to any of these objects, it will affect the text. So there we go, we are familiar with styling and style sheets. And now we can implement UI designs with more personalization and optimization. In the next session, we will become more familiar with Flex and implement the appearance of the page in such a way that it is responsive and has a suitable appearance in different devices. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next session.